Jake, and this is 12 Rigs of Christmas. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Mountains are blue this morning. What the? Ugh. I thought I had the spot here by the water, but apparently not. Looks like uh, this guy's coming down to the water with his lady. Probably want to do some making out. Didn't know Santa was going to be down here. Look at that truck. Damn. What's going on? Yeah, I just got a custom LBZ Duramax in this square body. Wait, 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 no. I'm not talking about the truck. What's going on here? You got your lady with you. You're coming down to this nice secluded river spot. We just came down here to hang out for the day. It's a make nice, out beautiful for, day You came outside. to make out for the day? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember back in high school, I used to do that. This truck does kind of remember, uh, remind me of my high school days. So what is it exactly now? It's an 80s square body Chevy truck with so, an LBZ Duramax in it. Something is not sounding right. There's a little rattle under the hood, so that makes oh, sense. Yes. You got a Duramax in this thing? Yep. All right, why don't you shut it off? You got to show Santa around this thing. Oh yeah, let's, let's, let's go right to the money maker. Then you can show me the rest of the truck, so. All right, so LBZ Duramax, right? Yeah, that's what so the thing's all about. What exactly does uh, all the L's and the B's and the Z's and the M's and the M's, so what does LBZ mean? What year Duramax is that? LBZ is gonna be in your 2006 and 2007 Chevy pickup trucks, so your 25 and 3500s. Which 06, 07 is what everybody wants, oh, right? Yeah. The Most LBZ exactly. engine, no DPF, yeah. um, and six-speed automatic. Oh yeah. So. How did it get in here? Well, uh, working at D-Max store, all we do is Duramax trucks, so we really wanted to- Oh, so to... you work at the D-Max store? Yes, sir. So you're uh, kind of sampling the goods, huh? Oh, yeah. Nobody Taking the shop to... truck for a ride with your lady? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. Santa likey. Yeah, we just want to see the best of the best. I mean, these square body trucks, everybody loves them. They look great, and we wanted it something that's going to be powerful and reliable under the hood. So went ahead and threw this LBZ in there. So, you know, all the kids are doing LS swaps these days. Like, normally you'll find a 6 liter, a 6.2, you know, maybe some turbos, something like that. And... Uh, you guys did it a little differently. You found a super clean California truck and decided to put the Duramax in, right? Yep. So yeah. before we talk about the rest of the package, let's talk just about this specific uh, engine. So what kind of components do you have on this one? Yeah, so we've got this thing outfitted with WC Fab uh, piping. WC, that's Whirly Custom Fab, right? That is so, correct, yeah. You know, we've known Whirly for a long time. They're a great uh, company to deal with. They make some rad stuff. And uh, so that's the intake pipes, right? Yeah, we got the intake and intercooler pipes. That right here. Be, yeah, yep. WC, we're the custom fab. And then we've also got their heat shield on our turbo. We've got the Garrett stage one turbo on here. So just a little bit bigger than stock. So a little bit more power. To the you wheels. know, it used to be that everybody wanted to do twins, you know, compounds, get real stupid with it. So you guys kept a single turbo in the valley where it's supposed to be, right? Yep, yeah, it's a full stock appearing turbo. So kind of keep it simple, just one turbo. There's not a lot of room in this engine. It's a either, Garrett so. turbo, you said? Yeah, yeah. original style Garrett turbo. So we just keep it right there. Not a lot of room to fit an additional turbo. Compounds are really cool, they're awesome, but want to keep it kind of simple. For so this let me ask you this. Santa's a little stupid when it comes to things. What do you mean by stage one, stage two, stage three? What does that really mean? So stage one Garrett turbo is going to be a slightly larger. So it's going to be a 65 millimeter turbine wheel. So What's it's a little a, bit Do you know how bigger. many millimeters the stock one is? The stock one, depending on what year you have on the LBZ, um, I believe is about 63 in change. Okay. So I mean, it's a little bit smaller, but this is going to get you a little bit more horsepower, a little bit more efficiently. Santa had kind of a, only a couple of millimeters this morning. It was cold and <laughs> he, he was low on horsepower and efficiency too, you know? Um, so I'm looking underneath here and as you said, the engine compartment's busy. There's a lot going on. It's hard oh, yeah. to fit it all, right? So you start looking around and first off, 
you see a lot of wires. You know, when you do a Duramax swap into these trucks, there's a lot of electronics that has to be tucked in, right? Yeah, there sure is. We used a D-Max swap for the wiring harnesses. And then, I mean, that really made it a lot simpler. Because, I mean, from the factory, these Duramax, they've got wires laying all and, over them. And, and, yeah, I mean, everywhere. you've got half of the wires the stock Duramax has. Exactly. And, and this was a long-term project, right? You got years into putting this thing in here. Yep, yeah, this is years and years in the process and in the making, and it's uh, finally pretty much dialed in at this point. Well, we, you know, we've done a lot of engine swaps, or, you know, the guys I know at WFO have, and this one is definitely pretty clean. Is this a factory intercooler in here in the square body grill? Yeah, so the intercooler and radiator are both going to be from a 2005 Chevy Silverado 2500, so it's a little bit smaller like than that. I like to call it a Silverado. <laughs> it's powered by Tornado. So, so it's a little bit smaller than those 607? Yeah, but that allows us to fit it in here, keep the stock grill. And when and you look up, up front, here. it doesn't even take, there's still plenty of space in there. Yeah. Does this have AC? Yep, has full AC hooked up. And so the condenser's in here as well? Yep. Everything's okay. uh, hooked up, ready to go for that. Um, and then Hydro Boost brakes. Yep, yeah. So we got it from, I believe, a 91 for the master cylinder there, and then full um, Chevy Silverado Hydro Boost brakes for the rest of it. It looks like dual there. Optima batteries, and you got one up here and one in front because you couldn't put it where the regular square body is because you got your air intake right yep, here. Yep, exactly. And this is a Whirly Fab uh, air intake as well? Yep. Or uh, what's the filter, do you know? It's the Whirly Custom Fab filter. Whirly Custom yeah. filter, okay, nice. Um, really clean wiring going around here, a lot of bus bars. I see, is that the engine uh, harness or a computer right there? Yep, yeah, that's our engine computer from D-Max Swap. Awesome, awesome. So uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this thing a little bit. We'll close this. Oh, the old square body. <laughs> Like, do you ever have to like pull on the lever and bang on the hood to get it open? You know, it's been pretty good. Eric worked his magic and I mean, all the doors shut pretty easily in the hood. It opens pretty good most of the time. So I'm looking at LED headlights, right? Yep. Yeah. I've got Top Gear Autosport, Autosport LED headlights in here with the DRLs and everything. So definitely a little bit cool of an upgrade. And we've been seeing truck. it pretty consistent that Baja Designs has just dominated the market right now. And you oh, got yeah. Baja Designs down here. Yep. And then... Is that the LP4 light bar? Is that what that is? So that's the Baja Designs XL light bar. X and so that's going to be, um, I think, the biggest one they make as far as width. And yep. so you can li linkable, link them all together. And, okay. And that's pretty awesome. And then custom bumper, did you guys build this? Yeah, we custom fab these bumpers, front and rear. Um, we wanted it to the frame rails on this truck since it's sitting on a 2006 cabin chassis, 3500. Now you're blowing. Hold on. <laughs> Let's back up here. So most people that engine swap old square body trucks, they're still using the chassis, the body, everything. Yeah. Uh, rewind, tell me what you did here. So this truck is not sitting on the square body frame. We actually took it and we changed it to a 2006 cabin chassis uh, frame. So the frame rails are a lot deeper and a lot stronger. Well, than come the over here one. and show me what you got. Wait, there's something else going on too. It has a solid axle. So that kind of hides the fact that, you know, you run an IFS uh, frame. So what'd you do in the front? Yeah, so we ditched IFS. We went to WFO and we got their coil towers so we could run a Ford straight axle on here just to really give this the most beefy front axle possible. So this is a 3500 cab chassis frame. That is correct. And you took the IFS out. So now that I can see, I can see the WFO frame plates, the, the factory coil shock tower, yep. um, and then the solid axle in the front. Now, it is a lot of work to do this swap with the coils as far as getting the axle positioned and the caster crack so you don't have like a weird bow in your coils. Um, so you guys definitely spent the time and did it right. This looks awesome. Yeah. So I mean, let's, let's crawl underneath here and take a peek here. So I'm not afraid to lay in the dirt. First off, front bumper, hidden winch in the front, right? Yes. And you got, you got winches front and rear? Yep, we got it behind the license plate on the rear. So the reason this kind of didn't look the same to uh, old Santa Claus here is, there's a lot of different components. So this is the 05 and up Ford axle in the GM chassis, but I'm noticing you got some different parts here. This looks like the kryptonite tie rod. That sure is. Yeah, I went with as much kryptonite steering from the Ford stuff as possible to fit up with these Ford axles and um, really just to get the strongest stuff on the market. So I can see the uh, WFO steering box brace, the sector shaft support right yep. there. Um, kept the sway bar. This is kind of different because this is almost like a, is that a square body sway bar? Or what is that? Yeah, it's going to be a Hellwig sway bar um, from the square body. So we, yeah, I just had to mount it up to the frame and then we made custom end links. So this is totally different right here. So instead of going from the sway bar end down to the axle, which here's the factory 
uh, spot right here, you guys uh, flipped it around and went up yep. in, in, the, in the name of room and space. Because yep, there's no down. way you could fit the sway bar in like going down on nope, this one. No, we had it it's going down and then there's clearance issues. So we flipped it before we kind of put this thing on the road and it works great going up. So what size lift springs are in here? So these gonna be the four and a half inch lift springs with like the two inch spacers. So it's like a stock Ford four and a half inch spring. Yep. With the leveling kit spacer. Yeah, so you're right around six inches. And uh, what size tires are you running on this thing? Uh, these are gonna be 37, 1350 BF Goodrich mud terrains. Okay, so and then what about those wheels? Those are awesome wheels. Yeah, these are Detroit steel uh, Delray wheels. So they're gonna be an all steel wheel, not anything aluminum or anything, just kind of a more classic look to go along with the patina on the square body. So overall, it's about six inches of lift on that GM chassis. Putting, body swapping a vehicle and putting an old body on a new frame, I know people have tried to do it with just a standard 2500 HD frame, and it's not that easy, but you guys found the secret sauce. So you, you use the 3500 chassis, right? Yep. And what's the difference between the 3500 and the 2500? So the 3500 for the cabin chassis frame is actually a little bit narrower. So it actually fits to the bed rails perfectly. I think it's about six inches narrower in order to fit the inner dually yep. on the cab chassis. Yeah, so it fits perfectly. We really didn't have to do much on the actual bed mounts. We just had to do one custom cross member in between to fit the rear cab mounts and the uh, front bed mounts. So, one, you know, and due to that, something's going on here that you can't see on, you can't do on many trucks. So I'm looking uh, and we went past the front there, but you got Fox 2.5 inch um, smoothie shocks with, with high speed and low speed uh, adjusters, correct? Yep, yeah, we went and made a full custom outboard shock on here. So we went to Fox with the 2.5. So you got the dual speed adjusters just so you can really dial in the ride for what you're doing if you're towing or if we're going to be taking it off road a little bit. And then we got the airbags integrated in that shock mount as well. And so the airbag is sitting there on top of the leaf spring plate and it ties into the gooseneck hitches in the back of the truck. Yep, that is correct. Now on a standard uh, square body or on that 2500 chassis, there's no way the shocks would fit out there because the leaf springs in the frame are so much wider. So there's not enough space between the tire Exactly. you know and the spring so all of the stuff that you have going by using that cab chassis frame has really made this thing come together oh yeah we tried it without the cabin chassis frame at first and it was just a lot more fab work than we wanted so we switched over to the cabin chassis frame and it was made everything way easier you know, way smoother and being that uh here it is mid-december we're in california it's going to be 65 degrees the sun's out you know we don't have a lot of ocean air this is an original California or, you know, West Coast truck. Yep. No rust anywhere, huh? No rust at all. No, I mean, I it's mean, been super clean. And I mean, this looks like almost the original paint. It is the original paint. And I mean, we took off the side moldings a little bit and polished it up. But I mean, it's haven't really touched the paint at all. People no back east nothing. don't even get what it's like to have these kind of trucks to start with. Oh, right? well, I roll through the Midwest and see rockers yeah. rotten out everywhere. So uh, over here to the back, another custom bumper, right? Yep. So this is pretty cool. We got the winch hidden behind the license plate and we did a full. So this just flips. Oh, doesn't flip it? up. We got to unbolt it right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a, don't tell anybody that. We're not done with that. <laughs> always a work in progress. Oh right? yeah. It's yeah. never always done. So yeah. we've also got the full winch or the hitch mounted to the winch here. So under here it's full for a two inch hitch and you can see it's all custom fabricated up to really be the strongest this, possible. This receiver thing. is crazy strong. That looks yep. awesome. And then I can see the winch up in here. Look at that giant exhaust. What is that? Yeah, we've got a four inch MBRP exhaust on here. Really Front to just, back, huh? Yep. But let's see if I can. Oh man, even Santa can put his fist in there. <laughs> Big boy right there. Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm laying underneath here. I noticed something else too. So we do have the bigger, taller frame rails. So the cab chassis truck has a thicker and taller rail, right? Yes. Um, but I'm noticing that this is not a uh, GM 14 bolt or an 11 and a half or, you know, what exactly is that rear end right there? Now we got both the front and rear axle from an 06 F350. So okay. we decided to just use both. That way the bolt pattern's the same and yep. you're not ever having to have two different sets of wheels or anything. So this is Sterling 10 and a half. Yep. Um, looks like it has like a SSBC cross drilled and slotted rotors or something. Yeah, it's gonna be the power stop rotors power and stops, okay. uh, calipers as well with the pads. Nice. You know, red, perfect for Christmas. Does that oh, look yeah. good next to Santa? <laughs> um, so, you know, you're doing a little bit of, it's, it's bad enough that we put a Ford front axle in, but you know, 
putting a Ford rear axle in, we're really gonna get it from people, right? I mean, if Ford did one thing right, I'd say it's the axles. They did. Uh, I know that at the diff shop up there at WFO, we very rarely rebuild this Ford 10 and a half. They never go bad. Nope, pretty solid. And, and that is the engine that was put behind all, you know, all the diesel, or the engine. The axle is put behind all the diesels as well. So um, what do you have for gear ratio and traction devices in this? Yeah, it's gonna be a uh, limited slip locker in there and it's it's a true track isn't it yep yeah true track okay. the slip and then the uh it's also going to have a 430 gear ratio that's sweet so uh you know a lot of people don't realize and don't worry about sam's butt crack and hitting his head and everything else so uh one thing that for people that are building trucks and looking for axles and stuff like that is that all of the ford v10 trucks had factory 430 gears in it. Yep. So you can go to a wrecking yard and, and like, what'd you pick up the pair of axles for? I think it was like 22 or 2600 bucks. It was really Front cheap. and rear, four wheel disc brakes, 430 gears. Um, so you didn't have to change the gears and then adding the true tracks front and rear kind of just tops it off. Huh? Yeah, everything was already in the axles. We got all that stuff was there when we bought them. LED tail lights as well. Yep. All right. Well, uh, Let's look inside. I know you got your girlfriend in there, so hopefully she's not scared of Santa. <laughs> look at that, amp steps, huh? Yeah, his amp steps are pretty trick. We've also got a switch in the gas door if you need to get in the bed. So these were from a four door uh, one, so are we cut sure them down that? slightly. Let's see. Yeah, we've got this cool oh, right switch there. right there. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, let's see. And so if you close this. Step up. And then just flick that switch, comes down, easy access to the bed. Nice. So we had to terminate the wires somehow, and we figured why not throw a switch in the fuel door just Ooh, so you could get. Look at that. that. Look at that gas cap. We've got some trinkets here. Look for at the that. Diesel. Is that billet? Billet aluminum, yeah. Does that make it go any faster? I mean, it gives you about 20 horsepower. Wait, look at that though. Green, red, it's Christmas colors, right? Gotta love it. <laughs> Tis the season. All right, back to the inside. So, um, Noticing kind of old school, but classic new interior, right? Yeah, I went with Guy Designs for the interior. We did the seats and the door panels. So it's gonna be full custom for this truck with the blue. It was the first one that he's done. So, I mean, kind of to our spec, how we wanted it. So you got six buttons. So I can only guess you got window up, window down for both sides, and then power door locks, unlock and lock. That is correct. Nice, I like it. And then I'm looking at the, uh, the diamond stitch there in the uh, front seat. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, so I said this is diamond stitch interior with the yeah. custom blue with the black inserts. <coughs> and then you got the classic Chevy look emblem on the back. And then we also got uh, a new custom wheel in here as well with stitching that's going to tie into the leather and this, uh, really kind of complete the look to have it. And the dash the looks front. pretty factory besides D Dakota Digital gauges in there. Yep, yeah, factory dash and everything. So we got the Dakota Digital gauges so you can look at all, all of them work. They're correctly, looks period correct. And you've got a digital selection so you can see like your EGTs, your exhaust gas temperatures um, and everything else as well. So where would you, uh, how would you put this thing in four wheel drive? Because as far as the transfer case goes, this thing still has the uh, Duramax transfer case, right? That is correct. Which so, would be a 263. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got it wired up custom to that 3D printed switch in the ashtray just right. to make it a nice clean look. And you've got your two high neutral, four low, four high, just like factory. And so we had to just custom program that in. And we've got the um, switch and everything all basically doing the same thing as factory, just kind of hidden away. So nice and clean look there. What happens um, if you want to smoke a cigarette? Well, you know, we don't do that anymore. Oh, yeah, it's not the <laughs> 90s anymore. That's what I tell people. Um, I noticed you got some cup holders right here in the center. So bench seat, which is obviously American for a, a single cab square body. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm slightly disappointed because when you pulled up, your girlfriend was sitting in the passenger seat. Well, it was a long, cold trip and she needed to have her blanket on. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, we, we call that um, riding <laughs> Anyway, love the fact that the interior is so clean and original. And I can see up top here, this is where you control all your Baja Designs lights, right? Yeah, so we use the Switch Pros eight button mount there and then we 3D printed that pod. So we've got Baja Designs map lights as well. So that really brightens up the <laughs> interior. So oh, I mean, you those click those, oh, yeah. and I mean, that, those are super, super bright. And that's I mean, that awesome. kind of ties everything together with a factory-like look. Is this your garage door opener right here? That's gonna be for the airbags. So oh, it's gonna nice. be on a remote. We've got a wireless one controller, so you can just uh, click the button. You've got two presets, or you can adjust the pressure to whatever you want to really adapt to the load that you're towing. 
You got the microphone for the Bluetooth uh, on your phone too. That's taking over the top. You can never forget about tunes. So we've got Morel audio throughout, and then we got a JL12 uh, behind the seat here as well. So you're, when you're rolling down the road, you can still be bumping them tunes. Nice. And then as far as for controlling the transmission, just standard park neutral drive uh, on the regular square body column. Exactly. And there's something that you're working on that isn't quite ready yet is uh, you don't have any uh, push button manual mode, right? Yeah, no push button yet. Hopefully something in, uh, that we can fit in here, but nothing yet. You know, and, th and there's a lot of work involved in doing that and not using the factory, uh, you know, steering column. So people don't realize how many electronics are in these trucks that you have to, you know, kind of defeat to do a swap like this. And looks like you guys have nailed just about everything on this truck. This is any, any man's dream, uh, you know, to ha basically have their high school truck with all of the, the new and updated stuff of the uh, mid 2000s. Yep, yeah, it's got all the amenities, all the reliability and power that you get, and still looks like a nice classic old truck, so that's the, my favorite part. Well, the interior of this thing's badass, but I definitely, uh, us being suspension guys, I gotta see what's uh, underneath here. All right, so I'm seeing that uh, these are not WFO control arms, right? No, we wanted to use something factory from the F-350, so we used the Kryptonite radius arms. And gotcha. So there's gonna be direct replacement for the F-250, and to tie in to that, we had to make a custom cross member, so it basically okay. bolt up all Ford stuff here. So you guys did your own cross member one off, I see it's got this badass billet transmission mount. That's awesome. Yeah, it's factory shift mount. motor for the uh, 263 here. Mm -hmm. And the 263 still has the uh, standard slip in the front, but I noticed it's auto track 1310 CV driveline. Um, so all the four wheel drive still actuates good, operates at high speeds. That's nice. Um, you have one of your Dura Duramax store uh, quick release oil drains on there. Oh yeah. I like that. What do you call that product? And we gotta love the Moto drain valve. Moto drain valve, yeah. yeah. That thing's no. oversized, so it's gonna still drain. Yeah, it looks quickly. like a three-eighths hole in it. Yeah, it's pretty massive. So you just flip the lever instead of loosening your uh, oil plug and out it comes, huh? Yep, makes oil changes quick and, and then clean. And then transmission is just kind of a stock rebuild on the uh, on the transmission on the Allison, right? Yeah, we did our D-Max Store Stage 3, so all, all fresh clutches and steels and new torque converter. I mean, it's just so clean under here. It looks like there's just the right amount of space for everything. Um, I noticed that the ABS module is still here on the frame, but unplugged. That's uh, one of the secrets of retrofitting uh, cabs and engines and stuff is sometimes you leave a lot of the factory things so that everything operates properly and just kind of go around them. Exactly. Uh, much like the front four-wheel drive actuator like on our kits where you leave it plugged in and uh, hook it up under the frame and hide it. Yep, yeah, we had to get that kept in there just so it wouldn't do anything funky and four-wheel drive would still function. I mean, the, the overall fit and finish, I mean, e-brake still hooked up, everything functioning, even though it's four-inch exhaust, got a great muffler, it's still nice and quiet, not obnoxious, has just a really good tune with that Whirly Fab Turbo. Um, no no big black smoke, quiet, smooth driving, just love it. And I mean, the underneath of this thing, I could lay under here all day and just look where everything goes and how, is all, how it all fits. And it's just how a truck should be built. Uh, not over the top for sure. Yeah, uh, no, really clean, simple, and functional is really the idea behind this build. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I need to get a ride out of this canyon. It seems like you keep on trying to get a ride out and Seems like I'm going to, and then nobody gets me out of here. But, you know, back in the day in California, it was totally legal to ride in the back of a truck. And, uh, you know, I'm living in the past every day. So I think I'd like to sit in the back of this truck and uh, see if you can't get me a ride out of here. Yeah, hop on in and we'll get you out of here. Awesome. Let me just clean up my campground here, you know what I mean? So this right here got my presents. Oh, just beer can in there that was my breakfast you know just toss that in the back toss that up in the back and then uh in on my tent i never really know how these things work but god damn shit Hold on. 
just like that. Just like that. No problem. Take me out of here. Don't forget, now till the end of the year, 12% off all WFO products on the website. No code needed. Go order your parts to do something like this in your garage.